some other ones and we want the co covariance of that new variable with z then it's just broken down into the covariance of z with each individual component of these guys added together that's what this is saying all right then um, so let's prove this so again from the left hand side this is equal to expected value of the product of these two so x plus y times z uh, minus the expected value of that times expected value of that uh, this is what this here now shows you why this method of writing it is better than um, using the expression with uh, the two brackets because I have to expand brackets that's why I said I'm, I prefer writing it this way okay now well we can take using the using the expectation rules here this is the same as saying take it through the brackets x times z plus y times z now I, why I'm doing this is because the idea is I, I I know the formula for this guy and I know the formula for this guy this guy let's look at it you know got to know why we're doing what we're doing so we know that this thing looks like the formula for this thing is this and the formula for this Oops, y times z. Minus mu y mu z. Right. So we're going to try to get four terms. One, two, three, four. I'm going to group them so that this is that and this is that. And then we're finished. And that's why I've taken z through there. Because look, I've got expected value and I've got x, z. Well, x, z is up here. Y, z. Y, z is over there. So exactly, it's, getting, it's going where I want. Okay, I do the same for this. Well, I could take expectations. This is a product, so we can just kind of look at look at term by term first so this term is saying the expected value of x plus y but the expected value of x plus y take the expectation through this bit of the bracket let's make it absolutely clear what's going on this bit through the bracket okay is mu x plus mu y all in brackets whereas mu z well, we'll just say call it mu uh, expected value z is mu z let's call it take expectation prove brackets since expectation is a linear operator I think this is something that someone asked me on um, on YouTube why can I just take the expectation as if as if I was distributing the expectation it's because expectation as I've proved before is a linear operator it means that expectation of a sum is a sum of the expectation okay so let's do that and then take these two through the bracket use z through the brackets uh, not forgetting minus through the brackets turns into a minus okay now you can see that we can group the stuff together uh, this first term and where is it this third term yep uh, and Z, yep go together and that will make up the covariance of X and Z and then plus this term here minus uh, this term here Okay, so finally just state the state it. Done. Okay, so by now you should be pretty much uh, kind of be able to do it even looking at my working. If you can't, it means that you don't know your expectation rules. With these things, once you've watched me do it, try to repeat it for yourself, and then you know you've got it. All right. Okay, so this is the final um, basic rule that I want to show you. So here it's a linear combination of f and x and y, and I want the covariance of that with z. Again, it's broken down. It's pretty much similar to the other one we've one we've done before, except for I've got here now constants as well. Um, okay, shall I bother to do this? Okay, let's do it quite quick then. Left hand side equals. And since you know what I'm doing, if you know what I'm doing, just uh, try to do this on your own.
and what I'm doing is we'll break it down because again just think to yourself what is a what is that form for that what is the form for that it's two bits there two bits there I want four bits terms therefore coming out from this okay I've got four terms here group them together you can see the a and the a common factors And the thing is that you know it might start hard, it might look a big mess while we're doing this, but the more of these more of these you do, the more comfortable you feel. You can kind of see, hopefully you can kind of see it's not that difficult. Done. And it's really good practice with the expectation operator as well. Alright, well those are the root the uh, proofs the of the basic covariance rules. I say basic because there's some more, but the basic ones are the ones you'll see on the introductory stats course. And um, so let's use covariance rules now to prove what I kind of s s said earlier. I'm going to show that the variance of x plus y, which we know to be variance of x plus variance of y plus two times the covariance of x and y. And previously I did a proof of this using the expectations, expanded brackets and worked it through. I want to show you a neater way using now the covariance rules. I say neater because it's actually we don't need to do any expansions. Okay, here's the proof. Oh, it's too light. Variance of x plus y. That's my variable, big block. So using the third rule, let's just say it's covariance of y. Uh, let's see, I don't know it's the third rule, so let's just state what rule I'm using here. I'm using the fact that covariance of something with something, let's call it something else, like w with w is equal to the variance of w. That's the rule I'm using. Well, w here is x plus y. So that's what I've stated. That's true from this. And now we just use the covariance rules, which we've proved. All right. Okay, well, the ones we proved not exactly this form because before we just had it, the closest one we had was like this. But pretty much it works in the same way. We just basically we just break things down. All right, so we have covariance. If you imagine this as a block, let's call it z or something like that. So basically, all it's saying then it's of the form covariance of something z, x and y. Then we do have it in the previous form that we know of covariance of this and this and covariance of this and this. So we have a covariance of x and y with x plus the covariance of x and y with y. And now that gets exactly in the usual form that we've seen in the proof. So this is covariance of x with x plus covariance of y with x. That's this first term splits into these two plus and then this similarly will be uh, hang on, I'm running out of space on this side. Should I do it underneath. So this here will go to covariance of x and y plus covariance of y and y. Great. Now I want to look at this guy here and this guy here because what do we know about covariance of x and x? Covariance of x and x from what we said here is the variance of that variable. So it's variance of x. Likewise this guy is the variance of y. What can we say about these two guys? Well, we said covariance of y and x is the same as covariance of x and y because of symmetry. So we state it whichever way you like, but there's two lots of them. So co covariance of x and y or covariance of y and x. Fantastic. Proof done. Uh, what do you think? So those of you who have seen the previous proof I gave you where this guy is this. And then we expanded the brackets, blah, 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 messed about, and then we showed it's equal to this. Uh, don't you think that this is much nicer? Wouldn't it take you kind of um, much shorter time to do this in an exam than this way? I think it would.
Okay, so those are the covariance rules, very useful, especially in subjects like econometrics or even just for a basic stats course. Okay, take care, guys.